Welcome to the Agency Hour podcast, where we help web design and digital agency owners create abundance for themselves, their teams, and their communities. This week, we're joined by the marketing coach and founder of Wonderstars, Nicole Osborne, and we're talking all things LinkedIn and personal branding. Plus, we cover myths about LinkedIn. We dive deep into what types of posts work, how to sell without selling, and how to get noticed by your ideal clients so you can increase your reach. I'm Johnny Flash. Stay with us. Hey, Nicole. How's it going? Oh, Johnny, super excited to be here. Thank you very much for having me on the Agency Hour. Oh, I am so glad to get to talk to you. Uh, loved getting to hear your talk at Adarim and... Um, I know we have some mutual friends in in Thomas Amos and otherwise, and so I'm just excited to talk to you. Oh, you know, same here. We've been having this in Majari for quite a while, so I'm super excited. The date has finally come. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I I know just have when talking with you that you are kind of like the wizard when it comes to LinkedIn and personal branding and stuff. So um, tell us a little bit about how you kind of help people mm -hmm. improve their reach and stuff on on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So I am based in uh, London. I work with agency owners across the globe. And, you know, I often find when it comes to LinkedIn, people hold on to some really outdated myths as in it's really, really boring. So I have to be really, really boring on LinkedIn or I've tried LinkedIn before and it hasn't worked for me. Or it's really, really spammy and I'm not going to be part of that spam fest. So my job is really to work with agency owners directly and to unpack some of these myths and really help them to use LinkedIn to land some of their best clients. You know, the kind of clients which offer creative projects, which pay well, and also clients who pay and to follow your processes and to really respect you. So I help agency owners with my uh, Wonder Content services, and I love doing it. Um uh, you know, we we talked about uh, mutual uh, acquaintances, and um, I know one of your amazing coaches, uh, Thomas Amos. He mm -hmm. wouldn't mind me saying that he was tiny bit linked and reluctant when we started working <laughs> together mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. years back. Um, so we, we worked on his profile and on his whole approach on LinkedIn and really how to increase his visibility, how to share his stories mm -hmm. in a way which he felt comfortable with. And he was willing, you know, he, he really sort of um, stepped out of his comfort zone and probably a lot of accountability for me as well. But I'm so proud of him. As a result, he got a project which was 15 times his normal project value for wow. Design Box Media. So, right? I mean, come on. What's not to love about that? Mm -hmm. Now, you, nowadays, he probably uses that as a referral platform, which is absolutely fine. But, you know, in terms of your digital footprint, to look amazing on, 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 on LinkedIn and to get some engagement actually really helps as well with Google Juice. So, yes, you can see I'm a bit of a LinkedIn enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I was part of the LinkedIn Content Creator Program at the end of last year. I was chosen amongst 30,000 people. So, yes, I've, I'm just going to say it. I'm a LinkedIn enthusiast. So hopefully today we can unpack that and show people how they can thrive on LinkedIn too. I love it. I love it. And this is so timely for me because, uh, as I was mentioning to you before we pushed record, um, we, we post on all the different social platforms, but it's kind of a, it feels a little bit like a shotgun approach, you know, in terms of like, we'll kind of make a post, try to tailor it slightly, but mostly it's just kind of the same thing going out on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And I've noticed that there's certain content that does well on LinkedIn and certain that maybe doesn't do well on the other platforms. And there's some content that we post that does well on other platforms. It just kind of bombs on LinkedIn. So I would love to hear from you, like, um, some of the things, and I know there's there's a lot, but just maybe mm -hmm. a few things that you found that like work really well when it comes mm -hmm. to LinkedIn. Yeah, fantastic, Johnny. I hope that's right. I had a quick look at your LinkedIn profile as well for for. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> because you know, I, I love about your your agency that your team is so visible. Um, mm -hmm. I met you originally at Attering when you were talking about the recruitment process and how it's very people centric. And that's really um, shown on your website as well. You know, your team works remotely, but you have some amazing team pictures. And you sort of show some of the quirks. Um, I think some of you play instruments. You know, you have fun when you have team meetings, and it shows. And it's the same kind of human connection you are aiming for when you go on, on LinkedIn. Because, hmm. yes, it's a business-to-business -business platform. But it's a social platform. So it's a little bit like being at a ginormous global networking event where you have an opportunity to listen to opinions to to join a dialogue and, and to connect with people to learn something new 
So I would invite you for your, your LinkedIn work to just say, okay, if this is about people, how can I put our agency's best foot forward? How can I make us interesting? You know, I know Johnny Flash, you have a particular way of, of delivering projects. I love it. I think you even call it the Johnny Flash way. And I want to see that on, on LinkedIn. And I would encourage every agency owner to think about, okay, what makes our agency different? And, and how are we happy to show that? Because when people choose an agency, and you know, I've been with in position for many years. I was a marketing director, um, doing the corporate stems and loving it and, and working with the most fantastic agencies. But often it's about the what will happen if the project doesn't go well? And no one has the fault, but what will happen if maybe my big boss, our MD, changes the brief? Or m maybe if um, the sales director who I'm working for on this project is changing, and it, it, how will the agency handle that? Because those are some real scenarios, right? And with the best will in the world, sometimes projects go down that route. So if you can show as an agency how your people handle that, and address some of these concerns by showing the actual people who would handle this, but also giving an insight into your processes. Then you're onto a winner on LinkedIn because it shows what makes you you and what makes you different. So the, the very first thing I would encourage you to do is, is really to see it as, as a networking platform. Yes, I know. It used to be very stuffy. You know, I'm German, so we do stuffy really well. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be very stuffy. But then Microsoft purchased the platform, I believe it was back in 2016. And since then, they invested so much money in it. So there are constantly new features. And admittedly, sometimes that can be overwhelming. But see it as a getting together of people. You know, you guys just recently had the amazing Mafcom event. And uh, so envious. One day I'm going to come. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And it's all about bringing people together, right? And having conversations, listening to each other, having some fun. I mean, you know, I just saw a video of you all playing in a band on stage. <laughs> and you can replicate that a little bit on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, see it as a human platform. And, yes, you might have a company page for your agency. Hopefully you have a personal profile as well as the agency founder. But just see how you can show up more as, as a person and, and, and think about the things people would find relatable. Can I ask you about that? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I th I'd have to even go check because I'm not 100 percent sure. But I think like mm -hmm. most of the stuff we post out as Johnny Flash, as an example, is just on my like personal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, profile as opposed to like a business one. Is one better than the other? Should you do both? Like what what is what's kind of your thoughts on that? Yeah, do you know what? Great question, Johnny. I think the reality in the agency world is that we all have limited resources, right? Already you guys are juggling so many hats. <laughs> Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. So with limited resources, where are your efforts best placed? Now, I would say if you have an agency team, let's say, of 10 plus, and everyone is really mad to show up on social media, definitely do your company uh, page on, on LinkedIn. Get everyone to share it. You know, get everyone to talk about the projects. If your time is limited, I would be more targeted, and I would actually just step up as the, as the agency owner because people feel drawn to people on, on LinkedIn, and you can get more reach easier by sharing some of your professional journeys you know why did you set up your agency by sharing some client success journeys you know what has happened what impact your digital marketing had what they've done as a result of it and by showing how you do your work now you can you can post the same content on a company page and on a personal profile you are likely to get more engagement on your personal profile because, mm. do you know, it's, it's a little bit, um, you know, if you like going to the Dell website, I'm not, I don't know why I'm picking the Dell website, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. <laughs> would you really expect to go to a company page and leave a comment and to get a reply? It's much more likely that actually you you, you go to the customer service rep and, and, and just message them through that channel. So just mm -hmm. think about our own human behavior. You know, we're not necessarily drawn to a huge company logo, even what I know in the design world, logos are really important. You are mm -hmm. drawn to the people and, and being able to open the conversation. So specifically going back to your question, so I know you guys are really active in blogging. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of your blogging app, blogs I looked at because I think it's so clever when you said about how to give design feedback, because really for members of the public and marketeers, it's hard mm -hmm. to give feedback on a design yeah. and it being helpful, right? So that's amazing content. Now, at the minute, and I get it, you probably use a really clever social media scheduling tool. You know, you mm -hmm. have the same uh, block link and you put it across the different social channels. Now, on LinkedIn, 
it doesn't like you to send people to an external platform because they are targeted to keeping you on the platform. Mm -hmm. So for, if you have a really good blog, and I know you have many, for one of the posts, I would pick out maybe three tops, top tips from that blog, post it with one image and ask people a question. Do you know, it's a little bit, Johnny, like you, you go to a party and you get the conversation going. Yes, you talk about yourself, but then you ask people as well, right? So let's say if um, one of the points in your blog was how to how to be specific in giving feedback. Mm -hmm. And also another one was to also rely on the designer's expertise to mm -hmm. be wanted mm -hmm. to do really, really well and giving them that freedom. So you post these two or three tips and then you could say, what has worked well for you? And that is a really small question. It doesn't make anyone look silly because, you know, Johnny, we are all on social media. We want to learn something. We want to make ourselves sound clever and look clever. So if you give your audience a really easy question, which invites them to say something positive, they are more likely to comment. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, have a blog by all means, definitely. But pick out two or three points. Maybe as, um, you know, bullet points that works really, really well. And then have a question related to that and then engage in that uh, dialogue. And, you know, Johnny, unfortunately, we've got to be really realistic. You know, it's not going to be your first blog you share. It's going to be absolutely exploded. Right? <laughs> it's not going to go viral with, uh, with a million Apologies. people sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would say forget about going viral. It's about having the quality conversations, right? But what has the potential to always draw attention is maybe a personal story now i know sometimes you know we we think about oh everyone talks about sharing stories but what stories and all you can think about in that moment are all the kind of stories you don't want to share mm -hmm. so when i write with my clients I, I break through that it's like it's a bit like a berlin wall right and we build ladders to go over it and just win um it's about figuring out which of your stories are private um and you would never really want to share them. And which stories are just personal? So, you know, I, I know Tom Amos, you know, he sometimes talks about that this is, design box isn't his first business. He talks mm -hmm. about that they had a burglary. So these are stories which are not too private. Mm -hmm. um, so, Johnny, I would encourage you to think about, you know, in your background, I, I think you play an instrument, do you? Mm -hmm. I think you do. Yeah, it's supposed to be over there, but I, I didn't take it out of the case after using it a few days ago. So, it's, yeah, I play bass guitar. Yeah. Oh, am amazing. So, you know, sometimes it could be just a, su a surprising image of you playing a, a bass guitar. Sorry, I don't mm -hmm. know my guitars very well, clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and talk about what, what got you into playing and, and maybe a surprising fact about it. Or it could be something, you know, I think you like traveling. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, would you maybe every now and then maybe share a picture of you traveling and just saying, look, you know, I love running my agency, but sometimes I have to take some time out. How do mm -hmm. you recharge your batteries? Mm -hmm. So it's that personal um, mm -hmm. element which which gets a lot of attention. Now, I have to make a small um, admission. I, I sometimes um, post something because I know it's going to get attention. <laughs> so when I was young, I played Santa Claus in the little village I grew up. And that oh, was wow. my, mm -hmm. my very first paid for job. Now, uh -huh. ultimately, that's a little bit of an embarrassing post, right? But I wanted to show that, you know, sometimes you grab attention by being vulnerable, by not always saying, aren't I amazing, but actually talking about it. If you, you're nervous about something or you've done something, you've learned something. So it's that journey post, this personal journey post, which works really, really well. And I, Johnny, yeah. I can't wait you to post that. And also for some of your members to, to take that on board and just see how they can run with it. Yeah. Love that. Love that idea. That's so good. I'm taking notes as you're talking because I'm going to I'm going to copy and paste to my team and say, hey, we need to make some changes with this. Amazing. Cool. Um, is there any other tactics or anything that you would you would say yeah. for LinkedIn? Yeah. So, so, do you know, this applies to all social media, actually. Mm -hmm. So you will know for your agency, Johnny Flash, who are your most sort of ideal kind of clients? Do you know, maybe, Johnny, think about what challenges do they face? What keeps them awake at night when they think about their digital marketing? You know, I could imagine for many marketing managers, and I know in Australia, just like in the UK, a huge percentage of your companies are small to medium-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. So frankly, the marketing manager suddenly is meant to be like the expert on everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure you had your local version of GDPR. Obviously, we now have all the exciting AI talk. So this is really hard for them because they want to talk about marketing strategy. They, they don't want to be asked by their finance right? Oh, come on, Susie, you, you, what's all this AI thing? Can you just do a board presentation? Mm -hmm. So if, mm -hmm. if you know 
overnight you don't have much notice so if you know your um idea clients this is what keeps them awake at night or when it comes to their own website they might not be able to judge is it time for a new website uh what kind of budgets do we need um how do we brief a web agency really well to make sure that we get the most out of the project so if you know those other key questions you can talk about these in your posts and actually really offer value from a point of view where you are seen as someone who, who shares value but without any expectation back. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we dedicate time to social media because, you know, we want to increase brand awareness of our agency. You want to be seen as a thought leader. You want to be able to charge what you are worth. But mm-hmm. often it starts with building that relationship. And, and actually, if I, Johnny, if I may, you know, yes. this, is, this is the next big thing. So often the temptation is just to go straight away into sales. It's a little bit like meeting your partner of your dreams, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) not bothering to find out if you are the right fit and just straight away ask if they would marry you. So go to proposal stage. (laughs) (laughs) So just think about it like dating. Do you have something in common with them? Is there something you can, something you can help them with? So Johnny, for you, if you see someone who's saying, oh gosh, we're struggling to give a designer feedback. Hey, you know, we've got this block. Would you like to, to have a have a read? And you yeah. add value to that conversation. You get to know them. Because yeah. then as you get to know them, you know, you can then follow up with them in the uh, DMs. Maybe you can invite mm-hmm. them onto a discovery call. But only once you know that you can offer value to them and there is a bit of a relationship. Because this is the biggest problem I see on, on, on LinkedIn is the spammy nature of it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Johnny mentioned, you know, um, I sent you a request to connect mm-hmm. and and um, you say yes. And straight away, I'm like, hey, Johnny, you've got to work with me. I've got wonder agency content and mm-hmm. I do all of this. Let's work together. But I haven't made the time to build a report. Right, right. Find out what you need and to find out what you're hoping to do and see how it can just help generally, whether it is for a business reason or, or just because we're nice people. So don't go straight into proposal. Yeah. That's so good because uh, we probably all had those people. And I had one of these not too long ago where it was like the person I hadn't talked to in like literally like 10, 12 years, whatever, knew from a different, you know, long time ago. And then they reach out on social media. I don't know if it was LinkedIn or one of the other platforms, but then they're like, hey, I'm doing this thing. And would you be interested in this and this and this? And they're just like, I don't know how you think that this is like, okay, but like you should have started with I'm in my head. This is all what I'm thinking, right? You should have started with the, Hey, Johnny, haven't talked to you in a while. Like, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And then I would say, Oh, my kids are getting big and all this and this, and this, like, how are you doing? And then hopefully they still wouldn't go straight to the sale. They would say, Hey, I'm doing this, this, and that. And I'd be like, Oh, that's cool. You know, whatever, whatever. It's like, <laughs> so great to talk with you. And then like, maybe a few more things. And then the like, Oh, by the way, I'm doing this thing. If you know anyone, whatever, like, but it's just Absolutely. like, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I find that if I can get more time with like a new client or a, a lead even, right. If I can get time to talk with them on zoom, if I can have a few calls and stuff like they, they, I can build that trust a lot quicker and get them comfortable that then when it's like, Hey, we're talking about a specific website project that this costs and so forth, it's like a lot easier than if I just kind of, so I, I'm not a very like, um, I guess, aggressive salesperson, I try to like more, I think, and I think this is what you're kind of getting at, right? Like the more we can kind of like build rapport, add value, you know, and all of that, and then kind of like, let that do the selling rather than trying to like hit them over the head with whatever offer we have. Um, exactly. I know, I know some people like to do that, but uh-huh. I'm just, that's not really like my, I don't feel I, that's hard for me to do that kind of like hit someone over the head with the offer, you know? It's and it's it's. I mean, it works for some people, but I think ge- generally speaking, it's more of a soft sales approach, right? Where you really establish, okay, I want that person to be in a better position, whether we end up working together, right, or, or, or not. Because also, I mean, agencies really rely a lot on referrals, right? So mm-hmm. by doing that, you stay top of mind, and as long as you then also ask for the referrals, oh, this might not be for you at the time, but do you have anyone in in, in your network? Which brings me on nicely to, to another thing I always like mm-hmm. to highlight um, with agency owners. Um, because I know you guys really love the tech and I admire that about agency owners and apologies, I'm, I'm sort of generalizing it, but mm-hmm. I love That's working okay. with, with my clients because I'm like, do you know the AI thing? How should I be using that? Can you show me? <laughs> Obviously, I get the best explanations ever. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Let me do it. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of um, if you just behind hide behind the tech, I, I, I strongly feel 
people don't really care. I'm sorry, people don't care if you use WordPress or Squarespace or Wix. I know, you know, there's many different options or Gutenberg or Elementor. This is all I'm, I'm going to bring up now. They want to know what transformation you're offering to their business. How are you going to turn their dreams, their goals into something which is achievable through their digital marketing presence? And really, talking about the tech is just going to put most people off unless they're mm-hmm. completely tech inclined as well, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because generally what happens, you know, as a, as a marketing manager, executive director, whichever level, you have to take your proposal back to, uh, you know, maybe the company owner, the sales director, someone who doesn't know about marketing. So if you as the agency just share the tech details, it doesn't give that person a lot to make a business case. Because, well, Nicole, tell me, why have you put these three agencies forward? Well, it's that page folder, and they're going to increase speed by that, and that integration is going to work. Well, it's going to switch off, right? So you can, if you commit to that, not being too tech-focused, you can really use LinkedIn to talk about the things which you know they actually want to hear about and which they would find helpful. Um, I know we had like a whole Google Analytics switch over, right? So how can you translate that into non-tech speak and just mm-hmm. bite-sized chunk that information? Because like I like to learn about these things, but if you gave me like a whole um, spiel half an hour, I go to sleep. Apologies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, for sure. so how can you make that fun? And do you know, I think Johnny, I think this comes across with you a lot, and actually, with the entire. Uh, uh, team at, at at agency Mavericks. You mm-hmm. show your personality. You, you 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 know you're not sort of hiding behind it. I know like Adam Silverman or, or Troy mm-hmm. Dean. Mm-hmm. You know you show your quirks, and I yeah. would encourage you to 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 a certain extent to do that on LinkedIn as well, mm. um, because that creates interest. That's like a conversation opener. Like I talk about. Um, I talk about that I like German pretzels, and I generally really do. It's not mm-hmm, the first mm-hmm. thing I buy when I go back home to Hamburg. So I have it in my LinkedIn tagline because if I just talked about, well, you know, I help you lend the best clients for personal branding and content services, blah, 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 that's just boring. But when, yeah, you, see, yeah. when you see, oh, okay, she likes she likes German pretzels. Why? What? Mm-hmm, <laughs> and it makes mm-hmm. it comfortable for people to reach out. So I encourage you to do that shine shine with your personality for it you know don't be afraid you don't have to be too corporate because essentially your clients are mostly small to medium-sized business plus even the big corporates mm-hmm. they are bored in their positions i've been in that we want to be entertained that's why we work with agencies you've got a cool culture we want to be part of that so show it yeah yeah don't be afraid of showing it and i think for you that could be one of your biggest assets you know the amazing culture you have in your team and it shows on mm-hmm. your website i want to see that on linkedin as well Okay, that's good. That's good. That's so good. I've got all these ideas written down from from what you're saying. This is really helpful. Um, Talk about a little bit, you know, um, obviously, agency owners are very time strapped in terms of and actually, this this is kind of a good segue to even for um, our our sponsor E2M because they're they're a white label provider that helps agency owners, you know, whether they need design or development or whatever. And I think as I was thinking about this, you know, it's agency owners don't have a lot of time to do the social media. I don't even, you know, draft up the posts for our own social media. There's there's someone on the team that does it. They run it by us, you know, and and, and everything. And I sometimes will give a little bit of input, but the reality is I'm spending like this much time and I probably should be spending a little bit more time. But um and so I think E2M is a great option, mm-hmm. our 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 sp- podcast sponsor, because you know, agency owners that maybe need some design for some of the posts and stuff, they could kind of get that help Definitely. and then, you know, schedule them out. But um I guess where I was going with this also is that there's uh, you know, video, there's you can do video posts, photo posts, all these different kinds of things. And they just they're all so good. And like, if I, if I could, I would do a video post every single time, right? But <laughs> it's hard to outsource. It's hard to like, think about how do I, I don't want to just always have the camera of me in front of the uh-huh. screen. Hey, look at this website we're building or, Hey, look at this logo that's in progress. Like, it's just not that exciting. Um, and so talk a little bit about that, like the balance mm-hmm. between like putting in the time that it makes it really engaging versus like just kind of getting it done. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit lost there, you know? No, no, I, I do not. I get you. And I think it's always going to be a balance between the fun elements of something and then the things which are getting done. 
So you you already said, um, obviously, you can work with an agency. So an agency where we'll really make an effort to pull together a really good strategy for you. And, and that will be based on who's your audience, what appeals to them, and where's the fit of how you position yourself differently in the market and how can we mm-hmm. bring that out on social. And when you have a plan, you have content pillars, which is like content buckets. So it's like different areas of, of content Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, something could be about your agency. Another thing could be about industry developments. Another thing could be just sharing content from other respected um, influencers or mm-hmm. in, in the sector or, or even just from your clients because that bodes really well for nurturing relationships. And once you have the um, content pillars, whether your team does this or your agency does this or you do a little bit of that yourself, mm-hmm. I always recommend because you are busy – that you batch content. So I, I don't pronounce that very well. Basically, that you have a focused content, maybe one hour once a week, or you know, three hours every couple of weeks, whatever suits your mm-hmm. kind of general day to day and weekly routine. So you have that um, focused time, and you don't just sit there. Oh God, I've got to do something for LinkedIn. <laughs> but you know, yeah. you, you know specifically, you, you break it down into okay. So we've got our content bucket. I need to research this. I need to get this creative done, or I need to brief my agency. Um, my team need to give me these different um, drafts, and I need to sign them off. And I always see when you have that time in your diary to treat your agency essentially like a client. To use mm-hmm. to use social media as a client acquisition tool, you're more likely to to make it happen. Johnny, the beauty is also that, yes, we want to create original content, right? But you can repeat content over time. So I tend to, with my clients, regularly go into the analytics and see what has worked really, really well. What like, could we use a different angle on this? Mm-hmm. Could we expand on this? Could we repeat it? And then you get to repeat it. So in the beginning, yes, you invest the time. It's a little bit like a digital marketing strategy. You invest time and get you to know the client, you know, what are some of the challenges in the industry, what, what's relatable. You pull together a doable plan and then you deliver it and it gets easier. Now, what I would say, though, let's say if you have like five different channels, I would actually champion just pick one channel and do it really, really well. I know in Australia, a lot of people find Instagram really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping you're going to use LinkedIn a little bit more after this talk. Mm-hmm. Um, but be really excellent at that one channel. So what I mean, don't just be average on all the different channels because you want to show up to your clients. <laughs> Johnny is raising his hand. <laughs> Nicole is, Nicole is That's pitching. Me. <laughs> yep. Really excel at one channel, uh, you know, because then if you build your following on that on that one channel, you, you can reap the benefits from it. You will be seen at influencer, you know, maybe you get podcast invites. Because, I mean, you have an established personal brand, but the average agency owner it's a little bit in the background because well, mm-hmm. we just want to get on with it. We just want to grow the agency. We're so much operational and, and client work always takes first priority, right? Yeah. Um, but when you are at that stage, what is going to get you to be able to charge better prices or to speak to better audiences is developing that personal brand and social media together with your content marketing. It's just a way to really boost that. So I would recommend that, yes, you, you do make time for it or you outsource it to really, really good people. What I would say is make sure that you click with that agency and that they take the time to get to know you because the temptation is too quickly to go into automation stages. It's a little bit like um, selling. You know, you, yes, of mm-hmm. course, we all want to have a most amazing funnel and it all being really aut- automated. Yeah. But if we don't find out what the hooks are, why people reach out to us and how we can convert them, if we haven't done the, the manual work on that, how do you automate that? Right, right. <laughs> so it's the same on, on social. Really find out what messages uh, resonate. And then if you're clever, just repurpose things across the different channels. So let's say if you have it in your workflow, so I'd imagine you have, what, two blocks a month, they get turned mm-hmm. into your newsletter mm-hmm. and have another addition to that process. This gets turned into social media posts. And actually, you know, we're not just going to share the blog, but we're going to think about what's Johnny going to say about this? What question is he, is he going to say? Who do we want to mm-hmm. see it? And, and just personalize it a little bit. Now, do you know, I, I referred back to um, Tom earlier, Thomas Amos from Design Books. You know, he had mm-hmm. exactly those concerns. But Nicole, I'm really, really busy. I'm wearing too many hats. Everyone is really, really busy. So if there's one thing you do, really optimize your profile. Optimize your LinkedIn profile so that you can get found by the right people and that you have your contact details in there and that you ask people to either book a discovery call with you or to download something so that you then have them on your email list. So 
optimizing your profile just for being found for the right reasons by the right people also is really really valuable you know if you if you choose to be a little bit less involved and i know us marketing and social media people we can get a bit too enthusiastic about those things yeah, you know, I, yeah. I know i know my own business linkedin has actually generated the biggest long-term projects mm. so I, I know it's worth my effort <laughs> yeah yeah Right. So it really just depends what you're hoping to achieve and, and then just really make sure that it's not just posting, but you're not afraid of jumping the people into the DMs, that you get them mm-hmm. onto your list so that you can do the follow up as well. I think that's really important because how can we see results if we don't then follow up and, and you know, get people on a discovery call and, and close it, baby. Love it. Love it. This is so good. I could just, I, we, we could keep going on about this because I've got my wheels spinning in terms of <laughs> LinkedIn and social media marketing. And it's, it, you know, has felt like it's been for us like a little bit on autopilot at, you know, at Johnny Flash and just kind of like thinking about this afresh is super helpful. Um, I know that um, for the agency owners that are listening that um, are watching that want to kind of get some more content inspiration, you have mm-hmm. kind of a free resource, right? That they can download. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, I would love to share. Now, I know you guys are really, really busy. So I've got 30 content prompts, content inspirations for specifically digital agency owners. So Mm -hmm. when you download this from my website, uh, you get a whole PDF of lots of ideas you can easily adapt. So hopefully you will never stare at a blank piece of paper. And and the ideas are designed to engage your audience, to grow your influence, to also offer a little bit of entertainment, but Mm -hmm. also a kind of post which encourage people to raise their hands if they have like a digital problem so that you can actually follow it up. So yes, it's my 30 free content ideas and I would love for people to to, to apply it and for me to see those Paris. Come on guys, let's let's break social media. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So and that's at um Wonder Stars. It's W U N D E R stars dot com slash content dash inspiration. Is that right? You are amazing, Johnny. Thank you. Okay. That's awesome. It. Cool. Uh, so check that resource out. We'll try to put the link in the show notes. Um, and I think that's, I, I, I got to go check it out myself because you've already given me just a few ideas and just our short conversation, but um, would love to get some more of your ideas. So uh, Nicole, thank you so much. This has been so such a delight. You are just a wonderful uh, just guest and you've done your homework and I just have really enjoyed talking with you. So thank you so much. Oh, Johnny, thank you so much. And greetings to your whole community. I know it's an amazing community. So thank you. Thanks for listening to the Agency Hour podcast and a huge thanks to Nicole for joining us. I really enjoyed our conversation and you are just such a delight to talk to. Uh, I really hope we get to chat again soon. Okay, folks, please don't forget to subscribe and please share this with anyone you think may need to hear it. I'm Johnny Flash. Let's get to work. Thank you.